What's up, BB Warriors? Today we're going to be doing another gear comparison, and today on the left hand side we are comparing the ANA Alpha MK2 chest rig, and on the right hand side we are comparing the JTEC MK2 chest rig. Now, the ANA is a copy of the JTEC chest rig, which is used by FSB forces in Russia. Now, before we get too deep into the video, I just want to say this. I know that the JTEC is a copy of the Tasmanian Tiger design, and I will be calling the JTEC the real chest rig throughout the video. The reason I say that is because the JTEC is the one that is actually used by FSB, which is why I am calling it the quote, real chest rig. Now let's get into some of the small, minute differences of the chest rigs that set them apart. Okay, so looking at the back of these vests, we can tell a few things right off of the bat. The ANA and the JTEC do not have working buckles that work together. You cannot use ANA with JTEC buckles or JTEC with ANA. The other thing is that the ANA has sort of a tan color mesh on theirs while the JTEC has a black colored mesh. Something else I should mention about their uh, admin panel that pops up is that it allows you to use a front plate on these chest rigs which is a really cool idea. Simply when you fold it up as you can see on the JTEC it has a little strap behind it. The ANA has it as well which allows you to put a uh, sappy sized plate in there. I'm pretty sure that's not what the real guys are using. Uh, a lot of these are being seen used over top a Defender 2 style chest rig. But that is just something to look for if you want to carry a, uh, a plate in there. If you get like the back panel or something like that from Wilson West Games, or you get an extra tourniquet for having armor. This could be a solution where you don't have to wear a heavy ass chest rig, but still get that extra tourniquet. And something I thought that I should mention while we were on the talk of Defender style plate carriers underneath is, is that the strap that makes this a H harness is adjustable. And on the Tasmanian Tiger, it seems to be a little bit longer than the ANA. I shouldn't say a little bit, like significantly. Which I found the JTEC's a lot easier to wear with a Defender just because of that one reason. It sits a little bit more comfortably on the vest than the ANA. But nonetheless, you can still run an ANA with a Defender 2 chest rig just fine. It does get a little bit pinched in the back. But then again, I am not running a rear plate in my Defender. It is just soft armor. So, as you can see here, both of them have removable admin panels which are stowed inside the inner part of the vest. Now, when you have the admin panel popped up, you still get a space to store documents and things like that on the top of them instead of inside the vest, which is a really innovative design. I really like this vest. It's really, it has everything you need, but it's not super high profile. It's still a nice rig. It has two general purpose pouches on the side, which you can obviously see. It's got space for four mags, either four AK or four M4, but most people are buying these using with an AK, to be honest with you. It has an admin panel built in. Either way, they have it folded up. Honestly, it's just a great design for a vest. Now, why don't we talk about some of the things that will easily differentiate between a JTAC chest rig and a fake JTAC chest rig. Now, I just want to point out that not all these are going to be true for the Crump Tech chest rigs of MK2, just because they put a lot of detail into it when they ordered it. They are pretty much identical from what I have seen. So the main thing that you're going to notice on the fake ones is that, especially with the ANA, ANA follow Tasmanian Tiger's design, where Tasmanian Tiger has the multi-cam flaps on them now, which ANA went with. So that's one of the biggest differences is that the JTAC, at least for their multi-cam ones, have the same color flaps for magazines as the Molly that's on them. That's the other thing that you can tell. The JTAC has that dark brown Molly whereas the ANA has that light tan molly. That's pretty much your biggest indicator if you have a real one or a fake one. Uh, they are identical copies of each other other than some small details, so that's pretty much the best way that you can tell if you have a real one or a fake one, and the coloring is so different on them that it is so easy to tell. Another thing that you can tell is that the JTEC has a lot thinner magazine flaps on them. Uh, just significantly thinner. That was something I wasn't expecting considering that I owned an ANA before I owned a JTEC. So that's just some things that you can watch out to tell if you're getting a real one or a fake one. That is going to do it for this comparison of the ANA Alpha MK2 and the JTEC MK2. If you have any questions about either of these rigs, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, if you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe for more airsofting content every week. Make sure to follow me on social media for all the content that doesn't make it to YouTube, including gear write-ups, pictures, and more. This has been the BB Warrior, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. It's most likely going to be my kit for Milsim West Caspian Gap in October. 
Um, I don't plan on wearing the Defender 2 because I don't think I'm going to be able to find weighted armor for it. Plus, I don't feel like wearing armor for 40 hours, but the MK2 and the Palma suit are more than likely going to be what I wear to Caspian Gap.